So I'm a Florida man, and when I'm not wrestling alligators or doing any other things that start with, watch this, well, I'm probably wearing sunglasses because it's Florida and it's bright out. But we're not here to just talk about any old sunglasses, right? This is Digital Trends. We're gonna talk about smart glasses. Now, I've spent the last several months with a couple of them, with the Amazon Echo Frames and the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. And there's a lot of overlap between the two. But which one should you get? I'm pretty sure I have the right answer. Before you do anything else, of course, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, thumbs up on the bit. You know how to do all this stuff, right? Yes? Okay, let's go do it. These are the Amazon Echo Frames and the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. All right, let's talk smart glasses. So these have been on everyone's minds a little bit more since the Apple Vision Pro came out. Now I know we're talking apples and oranges, right? Literally, figuratively, spiritually, all that stuff. And you know what? Count me among those who don't think that face computers are quite ready for prime time just yet. And I've been using these for a long time, all the way back to say, Google Glass, ooh, that, that, that's a rough picture right there. And uh, also the HTC Vive, I was among the first press to give that a shot in 2015. But we're gonna talk like proper sunglasses or even just glasses here. So the Echo Frames and the Ray-Ban Meta, and I tell you what, I'm just gonna call them Ray-Bans from here on out because Ray-Ban Meta is just a really, really clunky name. They are essentially the same sort of thing. They are glasses or sunglasses with some smarts built in. Now the smarts include a couple things, including Bluetooth, so it can talk to your phone, that makes sense, right? They also both have speakers in the stems, so you can listen to all sorts of things, music, podcasts. Uh, the glasses themselves will talk to you through their various smart uh, assistants, right? But the Ray-Bans also have cameras, and that's really gonna change the equation. We'll talk more about those in a second. So given that these smart glasses are actually pretty similar, which ones should you get? Well, before I get to that, let's just note that these glasses I have here are the glasses that I have here. There are actually a whole bunch of different versions of both of them. The Amazon Echo Frames and the Ray-Bans, you can get in a bunch of different styles. You can get them with clear lenses, you can get them with sunglasses lenses, polarized, not polarized a whole bunch of different options. And Amazon has this totally separate collection called the Carrera Collection, which are technically not Echo Frames, but they are Echo Frames. They're all in the same family, right? Just different branding. So you have a lot of choices here. And my only real recommendation for that is if you have the opportunity to go try them on, do it. That's really important for things that you're gonna wear in your face, right? First, you're gonna see how they actually look on you. That's important. Second, especially when you're spending this much money, you're gonna see how well they fit. Uh, Ray-Ban stores, anywhere they sell Ray-Ban glasses, you should be able to find them there. Amazon Echo Frames, well, that's, that's gonna be tougher. So let's start with a close look at the Amazon Echo Frames. Now these are the third generation and they start at just under $300. And I tell you, I'm really digging the way they look. I don't hate them at all. So I like that there are a bunch of options here. And by the way, they look damn good on my wife. Now. You're gonna have to guess a little bit of the size. Again, this is Amazon we're talking about. So go through the steps that they give you to try to measure your face and, and get it right the first time. It'll save you a lot of pain in the process. Now setup is simple enough through the Alexa app. If you've ever set up any Echo device, the exact same thing, super easy. And after that, you'll have Alexa in your ears and everything that comes with that. You got music and questions and notifications. It's kind of cool really, and it's done really well. Now. I'm gonna shortchange the Amazon Echo Frames here a little bit, and I almost feel the need to apologize for it, but I'm not gonna, and here's why. The speakers aren't great. As soon as you put on the Ray-Bans, you're gonna say, wow, those Amazon Echo Frames do not sound good at all. It's quieter, it's just not as good, there's no oomph to it, and yeah, you get a little oomph out of the Ray-Bans, we'll talk more about that in a second. And that's a shame, because there's a lot of promise there, but, it is a night and day difference. If you care at all about how things are gonna sound and you don't have to have the Amazon ecosystem, you're gonna to wanna to go straight to the Ray-Ban Metas, full stop. So that's one deal breaker for me. The other one is the way they charge. So the Echo Frames come with this little stand and the instructions that at least were in my box when I got them didn't really do much to make it easy to figure out how to put them on. I followed it. I'm a relatively smart guy. It was frustrating. But then there's the fact that you have to have the stand to charge them. That's not fun. You have to either be at home or in an office or someplace where you can put the stand down and plug it in and charge them. It's clunky and it means I'm never gonna take these somewhere where I'm on the go, on a trip, 
or even in the car. It's just, it's awkward, it's not great. And that's it. Sound quality, charging, deal breakers for me. Sorry, Amazon, I really wanted to like them. It's just not happening. Now, onto the Ray-Ban Metas. And first things first, these things are all Facebook. I still have some serious concerns about that. I am not crazy about Facebook sitting on my face. I'm not crazy about Facebook having cameras on my face. I'm not crazy about the pictures I take with those cameras being that close to Facebook. I'm gonna have to give them the benefit of the doubt here. Facebook today in 2024 is not the Facebook of 2015. I might have to get over that, but I'm never gonna stop being a little worried about it. So I already mentioned the speakers and the stems. Let's talk about them a little more. They are great for speech, things like podcasts and phone calls. They are great for music. There's actually a little bass in there, totally surprised. I almost thought they were bone conducting at first. They're not. Now, keep in mind, there's a pretty good chance that somebody sitting next to you is gonna be able to hear. If you have music playing, they're gonna be like, where's that music coming from? I might have had them you know, tilted up on my head at the Thanksgiving dinner table and everybody noticed. And you can still hear things, even when you're not wearing them directly on your face like you would normally wear sunglasses, right? So sometimes when I have them tilted up, I can still hear things. It's not as good, but it's better than nothing. So keep that in mind. It's a really interesting use case. So the bottom line on the speakers and the stems, and we almost need a new name for those. Steakers, stemmers, I don't know, whatever. It's almost like having a pretty good pair of uh, open ear earbuds like Shocks. I've reviewed those in the past, like them a lot. Bose has some really interesting ones. So it's almost like we need a new category for speakers and glasses. I'm gonna have to think about that some more. Now, let's talk about the cameras because they are a really big deal here. Now on paper, these are 12 megapixel cameras. In actuality, what you get out of them is, you know, the math doesn't quite work out to 12, but it really depends. So videos shoot from the left camera at about three megapixels, and that will actually vary a little bit because there's some optical image stabilization going on. Uh, if you ever notice that videos are cropped, that's what it is, that's why it happens. Stills are higher resolution, and they're not bad. Uh, you know, maybe not as good as what you get from a modern smartphone, but for something that's sitting on your face and is super easy to use, they're pretty good. They are also wide angle, so if you're gonna take a picture of anything close up, you're gonna have to be really close to it. Uh, but really interesting for just contextual kind of scene setting pictures. So you have these cameras on your face. The next question is, what am I gonna do with them? What kind of pictures am I gonna take with these glasses? Well, at first I tell you, I was like, I'm going to document all the things. And then I got out there with them and it's like, should I be documenting all the things? Should I be documenting anything? I mean, look, there's a notification light on the front of the glasses to show people when you're taking videos and stills. And you get a little notification light on the inside, but I kind of learned to ignore that pretty quick because it's in my peripheral vision. So it's a good thing that people technically can tell that you're taking video, right? That's smart, that's important, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should be taking video of anybody anywhere. Yes, you can be in public. No, people in your video didn't necessarily consent to it. We can have all kinds of arguments about this, right? It's not a new argument. Uh, there's a big thing in photography right now. Should we even be shooting street photography anymore? I can argue both sides of that all day long. It's really gonna be up to you at the end of the day. Just be smart about it, be safe, be courteous. By the way, you can live stream out of these to uh, Facebook or Instagram. I have had zero desire to do so. For me, the uh, one minute time limit on videos is usually enough. After that, there's like, what am I looking at? What am I staring at? One minute's fine. You can set that lower if you want in the app, uh, but you know, one minute's great and doesn't burn anything up or kill the battery too bad. Now the cameras are another time that I've been thinking about having Facebook on my face. So what you should take pictures and video of is one question how much I want Facebook to be able to grab those things is another. I'm really uncomfortable with Facebook having unfettered access to everything I'm shooting. Now, when you first take a picture or a video, it lives in the glasses, and then you have to transfer it to your phone somehow. A couple ways to do that. One is over Wi-Fi in the Meta Live View app. Super easy to do. It's not you know seamless. It's not the most smooth thing in the world but it's not hard. Now these pictures and videos will end up in your camera roll and that makes it really easy to share to any other app, fine. Or you can share them directly out of the MetaView app. Now there's also Meta Cloud Media, which gives Facebook direct access to it and will allow you to send pictures just by your voice. You don't have to use your phone. You don't have to touch anything really. Just activate uh, the Facebook Assistant and 
say send a picture and it will send a picture, but that's automatically uploading everything to Facebook. You can use it if you want. I'm not, I'm gonna have to think twice about that. Here's my bottom line on the cameras. They're not bad. I love having the option to use them. I love having the option not to use them, right? It's up to me at the end of the day. Now, if you're a content creator, this is the sort of thing you should absolutely have. It is great for first person video in all sorts of contexts, except at night maybe, because sunglasses, but whatever, you know what I mean. And they are super convenient for doing behind the scenes shots, which I know the kids are all about these days. Now, I said battery and charging was a big deal with the Amazon Echo frames, mainly charging was pain in the butt. It is way simpler with the Ray-Bans. So all you gotta do, pop them in the case. That's it, it's like AirPods, it's like earbuds, it's like anything else you've used like that. You use it, you put it in the case, it charges and you don't have to think about it. And that's important for a couple of reasons. One, if you're gonna spend $300 or more than $300 on sunglasses, you should take care of them. And I started doing that when I got my first pair of expensive sunglasses years ago, which also happened to be Ray-Bans. Keep them in the case, right? Keeps them safe. And in the case of these smart glasses, it charges them. So anytime you run inside real quick, pop them in the case, they charge while you're there. And then just every day or two, whenever I need to, I charge the case. It really is simple, it really is well done. It looks and feels like any other Ray-Ban case out there. Kudos, that's the way it should be. All right, a couple of other odds and ends I wanna go through to wrap this up. First, there's an actual power switch hidden in the left stem. That's handy for a soft reset, and it's just a good thing to know about. And actually, when there are times that I know I'm not gonna be using the cameras or using the speakers or any of the smart functionality, I'll just reach up and turn the glasses off. That way I'm not wasting the battery. And again, just to reiterate, you have a lot of options. What you see here is what I got. But you can get clear lenses, you can get prescription lenses, you can get sunglasses, prescription sunglasses, you can get a whole bunch of different styles. So absolutely, go through the website, Take a look, take your time. You're not stuck with what I'm wearing. And finally, there's this AI recognition stuff. Maybe you've seen the demo, Zuck did it, where uh, he took the glasses into his closet to pick out some clothes. You should not have to put on smart glasses to go to your closet and pick out clothes and have it figure out what goes with khaki. Everything goes with khaki. Uh, it, look, it was a cool demo. It's an interesting concept. I don't have it yet. It's currently in beta, so I can't really speak to it. I'll be interested to try it. I wouldn't use that as a selling point for these necessarily. So the bottom line, between the Amazon Echo Frames and the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses, it's Ray-Bans all the way, okay? Uh, I like the look better. The speakers are a thousand percent better. That's a big enough selling point on its own. And you have the option for cameras, cool. I like having the option for cameras, even if I don't use them all the time. And also with the smarts on the inside, I don't need Alexa on my face that bad. Look, I don't need Facebook on my face that bad, but if I had to pick between the two, Facebook's probably the more useful one for me personally at this point. Again, the Ray-Bans sound that much better. I can't stress that enough. It is a night and day difference. If you care about that at all, you're gonna want the Ray-Bans. In fact, it's making it so I don't even take earbuds with me half the time. If I know I'm gonna be outside wearing sunglasses, I just take the Ray-Bans and I use those as my earbuds. Bigger question, is this the future of face computing? Not these specifically, not yet. Uh, you're really gonna have to get to the point where there's a display on the inside to get more information, right? But this is the start. It's really interesting. And these Ray-Ban Metas are really, really well done. If you are in the market for a new pair of sunglasses and have the wallet to spend several hundred dollars on them, absolutely check it out. I think they're that good. I think they're that cool. And yeah, they're actually that useful right now. If you have any questions, if you think I'm wrong, if you think I look really good or if we should see more of my wife wearing these sunglasses, let me know down in the comments. Yes, I read them. Yes, I reply. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, thumbs up, notification bell, all that stuff. You know how to do it. That's right. We will be back with more here at Digital Trends real soon. See ya.